to talk today. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Today, we are going to be talking about selling on Instagram. Um, so something that if you have a product or service uh, will definitely be of interest to you. So you guys know the deal. We're going to just give it a few minutes for everyone uh, to hop on and make sure that you say hello when you get here. Um, hope everyone is having a lovely, lovely morning. Um, and if anything that I say today is of interest to you guys, of course, you know, you can always uh, message us, email us, all of that fun stuff. But we are actually um, having a um, a class tomorrow. There we go. We'll get it out. Um, at the Miller Business Center has invited us to teach a Instagram class for business. Uh, it's at the like I said, the Miller Business Center, um, and it starts at nine. It's a three hour course. Uh, so you are going to get a ton of information. Hi, Kelly Hall Photography, your first time watching. Oh, perfect, thanks for tuning in. Um, and if you have any other questions about other topics, we have loads and loads of other coffee talks on our YouTube channel, so feel free to check it out. All right, uh, I'm going to jump right into it after I take a sip of coffee. All right, so uh, today we're going over five tips. Ooh, that's a strong coffee, hello. So today we're talking about five tips uh, for selling on Instagram, uh, mostly related to if you have a tangible uh, product. So uh, let's go right into it. Uh, so the very first thing that you're going to want to do is you want to attract uh, your target audience. And what do I mean by that? Well, it's great if you have, you know, loads and loads of followers, but if those followers are not actually interested in what it is that you're doing, you're selling, they're not connected to your brand, you're going to have a really, really, really hard time converting. So you want to make sure that you're attracting the right audience uh, to your Instagram. And how do you do that? Well, you're going to want to make sure that you use um, the proper hashtags. So hashtags that should be associated with your business um, and your product, as well as ones that are interesting to your target market. Um, don't be afraid to experiment. You can see, you know, kind of go with a what you would think is a, a crazy hashtag, but may actually resonate really well with your target market. So you want to use hashtags that people um, within your target market would associate with, would search for, would use themselves, um, or that they would follow, because you guys all know that you can follow a hashtag on um, Instagram. So make sure that you're using the proper hashtags. Uh, you should, we recommend to our clients to have five main hashtags for your personal business that you're going to use each time. And then every post that you put up, uh, the additional hashtags that you add can actually be altered to um, be a little bit more curated towards the post. Uh, so using hashtags uh, will definitely help attract your target audience, as well as checking in places using those geolocations. So you, especially if you have a brick and mortar uh, that you want to kind of drive foot traffic to, it's really great to have um, that geo tag so people can see if they're in the area, uh, they can see your posts. And also, I don't know if you guys have saw, um, there's a little thing that says posts near you, um, which will promote businesses near you. Good morning, Teresa Oliveri Grant. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, so uh, the first thing you want to do is attract a target, uh, your target audience using hashtags and uh, geolocations. The next tip I have, tip number two, uh, is to use different styles of uh, photography to um, kind of entice your target market. So you don't want to do the same thing repeatedly because that can get a little monotonous. Um, so you can use lifestyle photography. Um, so those would be essentially taking your product and service out into the real world and showing uh, real world uses for it to your target uh, audience. Now those kind of lifestyle photos don't have to be 
um, specifically curated and, you know, they should be attractive because everything on Instagram should be attractive, uh, but they don't have to be as staged and modeled uh, if you are using like a real model or anything like that. Lifestyle images should be a little bit more authentic. Um, so they, like I said, should be visually appealing, but essentially you're showing your target market, a real uh, world use for your product. Um, also, you can give them someone to connect with. This would be like using a model um, or using somebody within your company to highlight one of your products. Maybe it's a coffee cup and you're drinking it out of it on Coffee Talk Tuesday. Um, but as we've said time and time again, marketing is changing um, and it's very, very different. Whereas people aren't really connecting with, let's say, the Nike check anymore. You know, years and years and years ago, you threw a Nike check on something, everybody knew it, what, it, what it was, and they wanted to be associated with that Nike check. This day and age, um, because of this digital era, people are really craving um, personal connection. So someone is more likely to associate with the runner who is wearing the outfit that has the Nike check, as opposed to just the check symbol. Um, so adding people um, in or models, whatever you want to call it, within your photography um, is really going to help someone connect with your brand. Um, you can also show a unique feature of your product or show it in a unique way. Um, you know, if you don't have anything that's Super different, um, but there has to be something that sets you apart from all of your competitors. And that is something that we call the remarkable difference here at Stark Media Group. So really, what is your remarkable difference and how can you highlight that within your product? Um, and if you don't have anything that is really, really stands out or is easy to capture in a photograph, uh, you can just take your product and use it in a really weird, unique way. Something that's going to stand out than just the normal uh, picture that is similar to your competitors. Um, you can also use the flat photo option. We've all seen those pictures where it's either a meal or maybe it's an outfit put together, but it's laid flat on either a table or a floor and you take the picture from above. So that's a really great way to uh, curate some content that is visually appealing. It's a very clean look, but when you're doing that, you wanna make sure to have a neutral background. So like I said, put it on a floor, uh, put it on a table, get some cardboard or a piece of paper, something um, that you can lay your products on and take a picture from above. So it's a nice clean background. So you're really highlighting the products um, in the photograph. So that's number two is use different styles of photos to highlight uh, your products. Number three is using the uh, product tags on um, Instagram. So you have to have a business page. If you don't have a business page and you're selling something, I'm gonna shake you. Um, so make sure that you have a business page. And the other thing that you have to have to use product tags is a store on Facebook. Um, and if you don't know how to set that up, please feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to talk you through it. So you have to have your products listed on Facebook in order to get the product tag on uh, Instagram. And the great thing about product tags is it makes it very, very easy for someone to purchase off your website. Um, so as everyone knows, the more that you ask people to do, the more likely you are to actually lose them along the way and not get them to follow through and convert. So the more clicks they have to take, the more likely it's not going to happen. So with the product tag, uh, or product tags, excuse me, um, you can actually, like I said, list the product on Facebook. And then when you tag it in your Instagram photo, someone can click on it see the name of the product, see the price, and then with one more click actually be taken to your website so they can follow through and purchase the item. So now that is two clicks uh, in order to get someone to purchase, which is really, really great uh, when it comes to streamlining 
those um, those purchases. Um, and it's also really great to uh, increase traffic to your website. Uh, and obviously that is going to, uh, well, not obviously, but hopefully end up with creating more revenue for you. Uh, and as we talk about all the time with the product tags, uh, they do show up in Instagram insights. So we here at Stark Media Group love, 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 love our analytics. Uh, so this way you can see where it is that you're losing people along the way um, and what's really enticing people. What are they clicking on? What's grabbing their attention? And all of these things are super useful when it comes to planning out your marketing tactics. So product tags do show up in Instagram Insights. And you can see how many people looked at the product info. They may or may not have followed through with um, going to the end. But when you're seeing people click to see more information, you'll know what they're interested in. And you can start posting more images like that um, or more products like that. Uh, number four, use a CTA. CTA stands for call to action. And essentially, you need to tell your target market what you want them to do. So do you want them to click the product tag? Do you want them to click the link in your bio? Do you want them to uh, visit your website to learn more? So essentially all of your, well not all, but most of your posts on Instagram should have a call to action. You know, visit our website to learn more, link in the bio, click the picture to see more um, or to shop more. So you want to use a call to action where you're essentially telling people what it is you want them to do. This is super effective uh, uh, for stories. Stories definitely on the rise. Everyone loves watching stories um, and, you know, gets that little sense of FOMO. So they want to see what you're posting. So if you're posting, um, let's say you have a new product launch or there's a product that you're specifically highlighting within your Instagram feed, you can actually promote that post in your stories um, and say, you know, click here to see the new post, um, you know, however it is that you're going to drive them to the post, which will hopefully have the product tagged it in it. And then the product tag will drive them to your website to make the purchase. A little marketing funnel right there. Um, and if you have over 10,000 followers, you have the access to the swipe up feature within your stories. So you can say swipe up to learn more, to shop more, and you'll be um, driving more traffic to your website and to your online store. Uh, and finally, number five, make eye-catching graphics. So you wanna make sure that you are switching up what you're doing from time to time. So I gave you, I think it was four, for, yeah, four examples of uh, different styles of photographs that you should use. And everyone knows that Instagram is beautiful content. So you wanna make sure that everything you're posting is edited, that it does look pretty. Yes, the lifestyle photos can be a little bit more on the authentic side, um, but you definitely still, you don't really want anything that's too raw, too gritty, um, unless of course that's on brand for you. Uh, so. In addition to that, make some really eye-catching graphics because if you think about it, and we talk about this all the time, thumb-stopping images. So if what you're associating yourself with is, you know, beautiful pictures, um, you know, be it clothing or whatever it may be, and someone's scrolling through that, they may be more likely to stop when they see this beautiful, colorful graphic, um, which is great if you're announcing discounts or deals. Uh, or if you have uh, a new product that you're launching. So making these really fun graphics is a nice way to kind of change things up. Uh, we like to use Canva and Adobe Spark. Uh, Canva is free unless you want to use uh, the paid version. So, um, and we also uh, use a few other ones too, but we can talk about that another time. Um, or actually check out one of our other coffee talks there. There's a tons of different um, different graphics makers that we use. So making really beautiful graphics uh, with popping colors is really gonna be eye-catching for people. And if that doesn't work in your grid format, because there are people that use a very 
particular grid format, we actually use it here uh, at Sark Media Group. But if it doesn't work in your grid format, you can put it in your stories, uh, which won't mess up your different types of grid. But if it does work in your grid, great. Uh, add different eye-popping, eye-catching, thumbs-stopping graphics uh, to your uh, Instagram. So this way you're catching people's eye and then doing all the things that I've mentioned previously to guide them down the marketing funnel to hopefully convert and purchase one of your products. So quick recap, uh, five tips for selling on Instagram. One, attract a interesting, uh, interested following. So use hashtags, geolocations to really associate yourself with brands, places, um, and uh, overall behavioral patterns of your target market. Number two, use different types of styles of uh, photographs for your layout uh, to make it interesting, to keep it, um, you know, keep it snazzy and keep people's attention so it's not the same monotonous thing. Uh, use lifestyle images, um, use models, put actual people in your uh, photos so this way you can give somebody, uh, people somebody to connect with. Show off different unique aspects of your products or use them in a unique way. Uh, or use the flat photo where you're taking a picture from above with a neutral background. Number three, use the product tags. Make sure that you, first off you have a business page on Facebook and, in, and Instagram and put all of your products on Facebook first so you have access to that product tag to make it seamless to drive traffic and boost your revenue on your website. Uh, number four, use a call to action. Tell your target market what you want them to do. You want them to purchase your product and then tell them how to do it, whether it's product tags, swipe up, or click the link in my bio to shop more. And finally, number five, switch it up and make some really eye-catching thumb stopping uh, graphics to announce discounts, um, new products, or any type of deal that you're offering. All right, guys, thanks again for tuning in to Coffee Talk Tuesday with Start Media Group. Thanks everybody for checking in. And remember, if you are interested in uh, checking out our Miller Business Center, um, class tomorrow, feel free to DM us, uh, check our stories. We have links to reserve your spot uh, and we look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. If not, we'll catch you next week. All right, guys, thanks again for tuning in. Check out Stark Media Marketing Group. It is our private marketing group uh, where we give little extra tips and tricks and write-ups about our Coffee Talk Tuesday. And if you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to ask below, DM us, email us, or put it in the marketing group because we like to have conversations about it. Don't forget to like, comment, share, tune in every Tuesday, and tell your friends. This is Cool Place to Be every Tuesday at 10 a.m. All right, guys, I hope you have a fantastic, fantastic day. Take care.